Okay, so now let's modify my DUDT. So uh, this DUDT is the Burgess equation with finite difference, uh, but like uh, we want to actually modify, we want to get rid of uh, everything we're doing here because finite volume is gonna be completely different. Okay. So uh, the first thing we want to compute in finite volume is actually the flux, all right? And the flux is uh, uh, going to be the, the flux at the interfaces. So uh, let me actually uh, use this particular flux approximation, for example, uh, basically taking the average of the left and right values at the interface. So U interface uh, average, okay. Let me just uh, write it as a U interface uh, uh, left average um, because we want to look at the solution on the left is equal to U plus, okay. So now I want to look at my solution to the left. My solution to the left would be uh, for the first value, my solution to the left, because I, again, I want to implement a periodic boundary condition would be actually U at the end. Right, and then um, from the second on, my solution on the left is starting from u1, u2, etc., up to n minus one. So this would be the average between my u and uh, my u at the left, which is basically the volume, the, the average, the average of the uh, volume averages. All right, so if we want to change how, uh, what kind of finite volume schemes we want to use, we would change this slide. And then my flux at the interface L is gonna be equal to, for, for Burgess, uh, Burgess equation would be the square of the uh, U divided by two. So this would, uh, signify what equation we are solving. If we solve a different equation, the flux would be different, okay? And what's next is a, a generic for all finite volume schemes. What's next is that uh, I'm gonna be saying that my du dt is going to be what's gonna be written here. My du dt, the derivative of the volume averages is always gonna be equal to the flux, now flux approximation on the left minus the flux approximation on the right divided by the size of the domain. Okay, so du dt is always equal to f interface at the left minus f interface at the right which is F interface at the left from two to end. And at the last value, it's F interface left at the, uh, at the, first, uh, at the first cell, right? So uh, this divided by dx. So this is my DUDT. Okay, any question on how I implemented uh, the a DUDT function for Burgess equation using finite volume method. Can you explain what you're doing on the first line when you find U interface L average? Yeah, my first line is taking the average between the, uh, for, for example, the first value in this array would be the average between the first value of U, which is the volume average at the first cell, uh, averaged with the last value of the array, which is the volume average at the last cell, right? Because the last cell, because of the periodic boundary condition, the last cell is lies actually immediately to the left of the first cell, which means the average between the first cell and the last cell is actually the average on the interface. Either you can think of it as the interface on the left of the first cell or the interface to the right of the last cell. 
Okay, so that's the first value of the U interface L average. Starting from the second value, it's uh, easier to think about. Uh, it's the average between the second cell and the first cell, right? That's the second value. The third value is the average between the third cell and the second cell, et cetera, et cetera. Does it make sense? Yeah, so are we gonna do any examples where it isn't periodic? Uh, sure, let's do some example later when we, uh, after we have our periodic uh, solution working, okay? Okay, sure, let's, uh, let's, uh, any other questions? All right, so uh, with this, let's actually start uh, looking at uh, how our solution would look like. So let's actually uh, first uh, run it uh, this way. Oops. Okay, so something's wrong. Unrecognize the function dx. So I think I need to uh, figure out n is equal to length of the solution and dx is equal to one over n. All right. So run this again. Uh, So, okay. Oh yeah, my plotting function has to be updated. So instead of uh, plotting using this, I need to copy my plotting function to here. All right, let's run this again. Now it shows up. All right, so now we have our finite volume working, right? Uh, as you can see, it uh, pretty much works the same way as our finite difference except for it's solving for the volume averages. And let's actually put a little bit more points uh, running this and uh, run section. Right, so it's actually now, as we refine the grid, the finite volume is now tracking the average between smaller and smaller uh, volumes. 